Zechariah chapter 13 with a sore throat. In that day, there shall be a fountain opened to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. <clears throat> so there's coming a day God's going to clean that Jew. He's going to wash them of their sins and their uncleanness. As a nation. As a unity. As a group. Today an individual Jew can be saved. But as a corporate Jews, many will go to hell today. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day. <clears throat> saith the Lord of hosts that I will you know that Lord of hosts when we read like we did today you know the kings worship all the hosts of heaven that's the host they're talking about there the Lord of hosts all the stars Rachel studying in uh, you know uh, the star names and all that uh, Pleiades constant constellations all that that's what they were worshiping and the Bible says, the Lord of hosts, say, you know what? What are you doing worshiping them? You're supposed to be the one that made those stars. And the Psalms tells us God has a name for all of those stars. There's a name for the three stars of Orion's belt. There are names for, uh, I was going to say, eight. there's names for stars that we don't even have never seen. That's the Lord of hosts. That I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land in Palestine. Again, God is against idols. Well, what do you say back here? Woe to the idol shepherd. Everything that that shepherd sets up, God says, I will cut off. Remember cut off me? You're done. You're finished. You're gone. There's no help. No aid. <clears throat> and they shall no more be remembered. Everybody makes a big deal about the 666 today. It's coming a day. It's just going to be a number. Mark. What's the mark of the beast? It's in Revelation. But that's gone. And also I will cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to pass out of the land. You're going to get rid of them. <clears throat> You're going to get rid of them. And it shall come to pass that when any, when any shall yet prophesy, <clears throat> this is in the millennium, his father and his mother that begat him shall say to him, Thou shalt not live. Why? Because Jesus Christ is sitting there. You don't need no more prophets. He's teaching and guiding the nations and the Jews. You don't need someone to speak up. And there'll be capital punishment if you speak up. <clears throat> thou shalt not live, for thou speakest lies in the name of the Lord. Look at that. Do you know what happens or should happen to someone who lies in the name of the Lord? They ought to die. Not given a radio spot. And his father and his mother that begat him shall thrush him through when he prophesy as he's doing it as he's doing the prophecy you kill him you got enough witnesses There's gotta be somebody listening jeremiah 31 31 to 34 and hebrews 8 8 through 11 <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day hope my voice holds out that the prophet shall be ashamed every one of his vision. Now, this is not going to be Zechariah, Isaiah, and them. There's no reason for them to be ashamed. 
by the millennium, all the prophecies that they've spoken have been fulfilled. Except for a new Jerusalem coming down, a new heavens and new earth. That's still yet. These are false prophets that come out among the tribulation. But in that day, the millennium, when he shall prophesy, neither shall they wear a rough garment to deceive. That would be the rough garment. That would be the sackcloth. Look at me. Look at me. I'm so humble. You see my collar? You recognize who I am. God's sick of that. But he shall say, <clears throat> I am no prophet. I am a husbandman. I'm a worker. I'm a laborer. <clears throat> I'm trying to get my voice back. For men taught me to keep cattle from my youth. So, The prophets are going to be around. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, 12 tribes, Isaiah, Je Zechariah, Malachi, Habakkuk, Peter, James, John, born again Bible believing Christians who obeyed what the Bible said. We will be around. But there will be no television pre preachers in the millennium. There will be none of this radio preaching, you know, give God a thousand, he'll give you 200 billion. There won't be any of that. You know, 88 reasons why, 1980, there's going to be none of that. <clears throat> and one shall say unto him. Yeah, I'm just trying to get my voice back. What are these wounds in thy hand? Then he shall answer, those with which I have which I was wounded in the house of my friends. This is the millennium. And when you look at Jesus' hands, after the resurrection with Thomas, Jesus Christ is still marred with the scars of our sins. I told Thomas, reach in there, put your finger in the hole of my hands. In the holes of his hands. The wounds in thy hands. If he told Thomas to put your finger in my hand, you know what that that you know what that implies? You know, you've seen pictures of scars, right? It implies that there is a hole. No scar tissue. And in his feet. And he said to Thomas, in my side. Thrush in, I forget, he said his fist, whatever it was. The resurrected, glorified, Holy by oh, Bible, it was G, holy body of Jesus has holes in it because of me. I get a new body. I get a body without defect, without marks, no pimples, no freckles, no wrinkles. <clears throat> yeah, but my Savior has holes in him. Those with which I was wounded in the house of my friend. What has that got to say about Jesus? Where did he get these wounds? On Calvary. What did he say about everyone that was around him that day? They were his friends. John 1 says they were his people. Only one disciple was recorded to be there, and that was John. Everybody else was gone. Judas was on his way or had already killed himself. Awake, O sword. 
against my shepherd. And against the man that is my fellow, friend, counterpart, saith the Lord. Awake, O sword, against my shepherd. Smite the shepherd. Now this was quoted by Jesus to the apostles. Telling them what they're going to do in the garden. Smite the shepherd and the sheep shall be scattered. Jesus told those disciples, Matthew 26, 31, Mark 14, 27, 65, 15, 19. He told them tonight, they're going to get me and you guys are going to leave. <clears throat> Notice here the garden came first. I mean, maybe the garden came second after the wounds. Yet verse 6 is in the millennium is at the second advent. Verse 7 is when he's in the garden and he hasn't gone to Calvary yet. You see why the Bible says, Study to show, thy, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. And it came, and it shall come to pass, that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die. But the third shall be left therein. One third cut off and death. I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined, make them clean, make them pure, and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my God that's not too pleasant to go through fire is it literal fire think about World War two when they were cremated alive. And it was remarkable with the Holocaust of the Jews. How many percent of them actually went to heaven by the blood of Jesus Christ? And how many suffered and died and woke up in fire? God is righteous. God is holy. But he's not giving up on him. 